Cashback. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping in and welcome to the, I think it's, we'll call this part two of the Toro 826 revival. First part really is just, you know, will it run, getting the motor all straightened out for the most part, and uh, then we were able to move forward. And so that's what we're going to do in this episode. Oh, I screwed up again. How dare you? Let me see what I can do. It's just a little verklempt. End of flashback. Done. Okay. That's all it does. It just helps keep it out of the way. It's not as good as it was when it was new, but it works. All right, to get these off, just grab your vice grip there. A couple of them broke. That's why. They're wearing out. They're getting old. Wow, this thing must have been used a lot. So what we'll do, straighten it out a little bit, but then just lift it up, right, and it'll come right off. Now, we're just taking off the broken ones, but what I'm thinking about putting back, because some of these, you know, they're just broken, they're worn. Now, I got, I got a whole bunch of these guys, which I was using to hang some of the lights in here. So most of them are okay. I'm thinking to tighten them up, right? We could just remove them completely. But to tighten them up, right, I could just use a couple of these, right? They fit, and then just pull this right off because you need to reuse this. Or one of these, but honestly, this isn't even, this isn't really any bigger. It's just, it's not like thicker. Well, it's a little thicker. I have a couple of these too. But I kind of like these guys just to tighten them up again. All right? So what you would do, swing that around that way, put it back, because it is a little loose, so we could actually use this to tighten with, and then you can just crimp these back down, or you can bang it with a hammer. All right? Actually, you know what I'll do is I'll, let me set up a different one, because this one's set up for that size. Is it tight? Because the other side, we're going to tighten that out as well. Yeah, that helps it to be a little tighter. And we'll cut it there. Oh, is this thing jammed? No. I looped it up a little bit. It's been sitting out in the shed. I had no idea where the damn thing was. Hey. Okay. And like I said, when we go do the other side, right, we got one more to do. I'll check, I'll check all the others. Um, if they think they're gonna break, I'll cut them off. But that pretty much puts it back to right. And if I ever get different chain, I probably have some more of this chain somewhere. But this is what was handy. Handy? Okay, to crack the case, um, basically we're gonna pivot here. So we just loosen that up, remove the upper bolts. Um, I place my jack underneath. If you have a scissor jack or whatever, it's the easiest way. Um, we're still in the same position we were before with that underneath. And then just crank up a little bit till we can get any access. Now, I'm ready to pull the belt off, but we got mud wasps in there. Lots of them. So I'm going to try to get that off. A lot of it's going to fall down into the, into the bottom so, unfortunately, we'll probably have to go back in there. Anyway, we got to go in there anyway because we have third gear issues. Let me scrape that and suck it with the vacuum at the same time. See? All right, tires are back on. Um, this one is the one I went over and I added some chain. Everything else looks good over here. Uh, let's see, we'll just back up. This one, um, I put this one, the other one had almost 20 pounds of air in it. This one was flat. Put some flat on it. I shortened the chain. Didn't need any replacement. I shortened it on bolts on, on the one side, on the inside. Got the stop leak in it, got up to 20 pounds. We got the belt on. I put a 39 inch belt. This is by half inch, as opposed to 40 and a quarter. Took a little bit to get on. We're all done there. Mud dauber nest is gone. Um, I wanna check just real quick, just to see. Yeah, that might need, this handle might need a little bit of adjustment, but it, it seems like it's going. All right, we still got to test it. Came over here, we got the uh, feed off. I started to do my little bit of wire wheeling. All right, the feet are in excellent shape. I mean, look at what they're made out of, right? So this is, this moves, okay? So that scraper moves. 
I want to push it down and get in there, get all around the inside. We're going to put a little bit of uh, rusty metal primer. So we'll clean this off, degrease it, acid etch it a little bit. Then uh, let that sit and go eat lunch or something and come back. These also need to be deburred, but we're going to deburr this. This is going to grab my grinder and go make a pass over that, make it nice, make it flat. Um, and then we'll put later on, we'll put some rusty metal primer. We'll come back and later and we'll, we'll deburr these later on. Now, what is this thing? My guess is, is that as the drum is rolling inward, right, and lifting the snow up, if you were to grab, let's say an example would be is like a, a newspaper roll, right, rolled up in the ground in a plastic or whatever. Maybe it's frozen, maybe it's not, and it gets sucked in here. I think this disengages. Now, I can't tell you for sure because I can't physically move these things properly. If I had help, I would need somebody to kind of help turn the auger, maybe from in here or from over here, and then try to pull this thing in. Or, and or maybe what I might do is later I might try to clamp this back with a C-clamp and then see if I can turn any, you know, turn it. This needs, it's a little bent, so we're going to deburr it, bend it down after I get a little bit of de-rusting things going on here. So we'll be back in a bit, and uh, I'm not going to show you a lot of that because it's mostly just wire wheeling and cleaning. All right, getting there. So, yes, um, when you pull this back, I did. I pulled it back, I clamped it, and what happens is this does not turn. All right, so what I did was I pulled the plug out of the engine, I put the auger belt engaged, and I can pull this thing over. The only thing is because it's a ball design starter, that when you lean all the way back, the balls fall out of the way and there's no way to engage them. So I figured, all right, well, we'll lean this thing to the front this way where it's a little easier to see and make a mess. I started getting in there pretty good, right? We're almost done. And then of course, while I'm here, because I have to keep turning this to get to where I need to get here for the grinder. So I figured, all right, well, we'll dress the edge while we're here. It's make a mess now, make the mess now. We'll get what we can get to. Um, I'm not going to be able to get everything. Can't get everything in there, but we'll get what we can get to. All right, clean up. A little bit of super clean. Thanks, super clean, for helping us out on this one. And I've been letting it sit for a little bit. I'm going to get in there and wipe everything down with a rag. It's been a little bit, you know, five or ten minutes. I wire wheeled everything I could get to. All these edges, all that tearing and burrs are off so I see somebody actually put some welds in a few spots um, if I get around to that again I'll show you wipe it down blow it off real quick and then we'll put some acid on and we'll take another break because I'm tired you can actually see right a lot of the rust is just gone and this white precipitate that zinc is left behind it did a really nice job so now I, all I got to do now is I got my wet rag, bucket of water, soapy water, and I'll go around, spray this thing down with some just mild detergent. I usually just use a, I have a spray bottle with some water and, and like Dawn in it, you know, used for setting beads and checking leaks and, and doing stuff like this. So just hose it down real quick, wipe everything good, blow it off, let it dry. I cleaned up in here, wiped everything down. I mean, this thing was dirty. This really was a job for... My, my pressure washer, hose, and or my steam jenny. I, I got to get that thing working. This, I, I think I said it in another segment, this is the job for the steam jenny. It's one of those kinds of jobs. All right, even though it's getting late, right, you, could, you can actually see some of that, again, that white precipitate. It's all washed off, wiped off. It's as clean as it's going to get. And in many cases, that surface rust and other rust, after hitting with a wire wheel and then putting the acid on and a little scotch bright, and you leave it sit, it, it, most of it wiped off. So we're gonna put a little black on this, just there's some black there. I'm not gonna really do anything in there, we'll probably spray a little bit of primer or something. Okay, but we get to, to, you know, we're gonna have to get in there another time. But maybe we get a little paint or something in there. But this edge here, all along the bottom, the issues there, right, so we could put the shoes back so we don't have rot creeping in between seams. And just a good general cleanup. And boy, it made a mess in here. So I'm ready to start shooting paint. And primer stage, and I shot the drum black. All right, we're gonna come back in a minute. I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on, 
Walk away. I got a few other things to do. Let it air out a little bit. Cover over these labels, and then we'll finish the paint. Let everything air out, and I'm done for today. We'll get another look tomorrow. It's dark in here now. A couple of spots I got to hit tomorrow. The next day. All right, I tried dealing with that lever again, but I'm not going to get anywhere at that. We're just making it worse, okay? Um, I'm going to completely destroy that if I'm not careful. So the biggest problem is over in here. It's not going down enough because this handle's been bent. So we're going to have to deal with aligning these handles, getting everything sorted. I may have to heat that one more time and push it this way. Um, I think that'll help as well. I have just about enough gas to do that. All right, so I got it cleaned up a little bit. So you can see the hand, this handle is bending it down, downward. And in second gear, it clears the bottom of this notch. But when we get to third, it's hitting. So we're going to take that bend out, put it the right way, and see what happens. All right, I'm not going to touch this anymore because I don't have enough oxygen. When I have more oxygen, we'll come back in. So what I want to show you is, hold on, let me just get that water off of that plate. All right, so she's spinning. So we're kind of in like a neutral state. And what's happening is somebody cut this off, right, so that this would come up all the way, right, so that it would go into reverse. Now, my guess is one way around that is we can bend that rod a little bit more, and we should. So now it's gripping, all right, it's gripping good. All right, so that's reverse. All right, and come down to here. Oh, let me change my grip on my camera. That's neutral. Okay. And then we'll get over to second, or first rather. See all that room? And then that is second. See all that room? See, it's gripping. And then, see all the room? And it's gripping, okay? Now, what we could do, since the bend, so I, I adjusted the bend here a little bit. I, I can't do any more without oxygen. I need, uh, I need it hotter. But I think we're pretty good. What we can do is come up to here and put a mark and I might be able to give it just a sneak of a bend over here or a little bit over in this area. So I want to get a couple of marks and I want to look to see what we have. So this is the new bend. All right, little chick here. Tried to bring this up, but I really need more heat. And then I just cleaned it up and put a little bit of uh, some high heat, which is like a luminized paint. It dries real fast. Let's put it in and I have a few more things to do. All right, buttoned up. Got a little paint on the spring too. Everything's lubricated. Okay. So that's your neutral. First gear, second gear, third gear. Fits nice. See, plenty of room. Then I put new, some new hardware, washers. Also a couple of big fender style washers up here because it's bending. Take the switch out, we're gonna wire up a switch. And that's what it looks like down here. We're upside down, so that's not too bad. And then to come over to neutral, and then up, and you kind of have to hold it, right? Because it's a dead man for reverse. All right, let's get the switch out. All right, key was kind of stuck in there. We'll lube it up, chain lube, and I'm just gonna run this over the wire wheel, just careful like. And we'll clean up the contacts, and then I'm going to test it. All right, switch is working, and I twist it back and forth, you know, a hundred times. Clean it out with brake cleaner and whatever. But I'm going to leave it in a little of this Lumabrite for a little while, just, you know, five minutes or so. And then go back and forth with the key, and then we'll clean it out and we'll lube it, and it should be fine. All right. Now that switch is backwards. Maybe somebody replaced it and put the wrong one. But um, th this way, 
okay, it's actually run mode because you're grounding, right? You ground the coil to chassis ground, engine ground, shorts it out. And also the key comes out, okay? So generally the key should not come out in run mode. So let me drill a little hole and find a little spot to put a little lanyard or something right over here. And that way we won't lose the key. Because that would suck. All right, I'm not happy while I'm up here too. I'm not happy with this arrangement. Tires right in the way, it's just gonna make a mess. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of blue block on that. If we still have some. Yeah, we got a little bit. Spin this guy on. Probably have another one. Let me see what I have. Okay, there was no joy on a standard L, but this worked out good and it just clears. The only thing is that's going to rust, but we'll put a little paint on that. And this way you should, we'll see, and maybe we can put an extension, but it might clear the tire where you could just take like a flat tray, and we're going to find out soon, and, uh, and just slide the corner of the tray in, right? This way you don't have to take anything off. That should, that should do it. I'm not going to get it super tight because we're going to take it back off. That should do it. All right, done. I just take a little bit of that same paint and put it on a brush and just, you know, brush it on. All right, we are ready to put the other tire on and then we will make a, a switch connection. So we might even want to leave the tire off because we may need to grab a ground somewhere. Let me see how I want to do that. Get the, bad, the badass crimper. Yeah, but these aren't the mill spec connectors. But they'll work. I right, just gotta put a couple of tie wraps on. Tighten this up. Put the tire on and then we'll do a test. Alright, I probably gonna wanna put yeah, that should be good. We want to kind of keep it so that you can adjust that cable. Yeah, you don't want it in the way of anything. Probably put a little, little tie there just to keep it out of the way of this rod. Okay, ignition, all done. Drain tube, excellent place. Let's go over to the other side, right? All the routing. Let's take a quick peek. And then maybe we can come back in and deal with the little spring on that clutch down there. You're not going to be able to see it. Um, this is a little too tight. That right over there, right here. Can you see that? I think you can see it. It's probably not enough light. If not tomorrow, we'll take a look. It's hitting the front of pulley right there. And I think these are starting to polish up, but I didn't run them long enough, right? It just, that's the first time I ran it. Everything else is good to go. And I guess tomorrow, hopefully you can see that bottom thread thereabouts on these big old motors. No dipstick. Okay, so auger is off, that's, that lever's down. Right now we can see it, but we're just getting used to. So auger, this lever comes up. We're in neutral here, and these rods are pulled up, so the tires are disengaged. Um, set it to about mid-throttle. We'll drop the choke. I don't see any leaks. We've got the pet cock tickled open. And the ignition switch is set to where you can pull the key out. I got a little lanyard on it. All right, I lubricated the switch as well. You can always put a little more lube in. Okay, a little too much on the choke.
Okay, we're gonna put it up in the back and try the tires out. Something's smoking down there. Is something getting hot? I see what it might be. This is rubbing on this, on this thing here. Um, that's what it looks like it is. The rod that's connected to the auger is just kissing the top of this, the front of this pulley. Just kissing it. So we're gonna wanna look to see what's going on with that. Gonna have some bugs. It's running really good, the auger's going. Now, the only other thing too is that the belt isn't slipping enough, and that just could be because the, this, you know, the belt is very tight, it may not be exactly the right size belt, and the pulleys are, were a little rusty, so they're really gripping good. I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, there's nothing we can do, I think, to really adjust that. Um, I don't think there's any play in this hole here, which is probably a good thing. All right, let's put the back up and test for the, the transaxle. Okay, she's up on, on a chalk. Um, this isn't fully engaging all the time because there's some additional slop. That spring is not pulling it back hard enough, that broken spring. So we're gonna need to find another spring and fix that up. Uh, so that's two things here on this side. And other than that, it seems like it's okay. Uh, let's turn it back on. Give it a pull, it's still warm, so. Lines up perfect. Lines up perfect. Oh, look at that. Oh, look, we can turn it to get to that section. Why is this thing going up again? Hold on. Look, see? Yeah, let's take a little bit, spray it into a cup. And you can get to. I'll do, actually, while I'm letting it drain. It's late, so I'm getting tired. That's perfect, isn't it? Now, let's tighten that up a little. Okay, we'll just grab it. It needs, uh, we'll, we'll tighten it when we put the cap on. Yeah, that makes life easier. Yeah, that was black. That makes life much easier. That's way more better. Well, that blue block is still able to be moved. There we go. All right, I'm gonna let that train and go touch up a few things, play around a little bit. Uh, I think we're just about ready for the next step. All right, guys, I think we did pretty good on the revival. So we got a will it run and revival, along with a bit of the refurb, right? I wound up having to do some refurb on it because it's not like a car. I mean, if you want to drive it, right, like a car, you have to 
you have to do a will it run and you, you could do something of a revival but in that revival is going to be a bit of a refurb because some things are just not going to work and you're not going to be able to drive it and there's no difference here so we have the auger working um, that's working good like I said the belt might be a little too tight for the reasons I mentioned earlier possibly the pulleys need to run in a little bit more and it'll slip a little bit polish up those pulleys I have that one little issue over there where the pulley is hitting I'll show you that uh, we have to deal with um, what is what else did I have to say there? oh that spring on the other side or is it this side I don't remember it's that side I think so it's two things on the same side I get to watch my own videos to find out what the hell I did and said um, so those two little things we want to look at we have ignition kill on it that's good to go I have a knob to put on we have a little bit more painting to do and I'm thinking about going with an orange a Chevy orange uh, on the motor because it is a different color it it's like a Chevy orange and I have some of the Chevy orange laying around so and it's a bit weird looking maybe black would go better maybe if I did the engine in like a silver or aluminum aluminum and then did a black cover uh, the other one over there has that something similar to that it's got like a Chevy orange with a black gas tank and I don't know the thing is I don't I've seen some of the pictures of these machines and there are some slight differences. We have to go over the handles a little bit more. I want to go the, you know, clear coat the front of that plate, that Toro cover, uh, the control cover. I want to hit black on the chute. I want to check over the chute a little bit more, make sure it's moving good. We want to do the rims, right? We want to be able to paint the rims, probably just stick with a white on that. Um, I may not have enough white to do it, so maybe we can mix up a gray. I may have some, you know, I want to use up some of the paint that I have laying around. So I think tomorrow we're going to hit the punch items that I need to hit. We also have to finish uh, spraying the top. Now, I don't want to finish spraying the very top of the can until I've hit a bunch of other items because if I need to tape something or if I spill something, I don't want to be doing that on top of fresh paint. The paint on the side is a day old. The paint on the bottom is two days old. We're good to go. This oil drain was killer, right? That's working out great. Well, we have to make a mess all over everything. So we got a couple things to do. Stay with me, guys, if you want to stay with this part of the project. And uh, coming up, uh, definitely do it. And we can see what this thing looks like at the end. And I think it's going to be real sharp. Uh, today is Tuesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. I think su snow is Sunday. And so I definitely want to be ready for that. I think one more day we'll sharpen this thing up and we'll get this thing made. I'll see you guys tomorrow.